Hey, what's up guys? In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to set up voicemail to email on the Panasonic NS phone systems using a free Gmail account. So we'll open up a web browser and browse to accounts.google.com forward slash sign up. This will take you directly to the new Gmail account setup. So just create a new account for your customer or for your own system. So I'll just create a dummy account. I'll just call it YouTube demo, something like that. YouTube demo. Hopefully it's available. If not, I'll just pick anything else that comes up. Password, I'll just make it easy for this. Of course, I'll be changing it after the video is done. Not that I'll be using this account anyway. So the password, as you can see, is YouTube123. Oh, that name is not available, so I'll just pick that one there. That'll do. All right, so that one's available. Uh, I'll just leave that blank. I think you have to enter a birthday, so I'll just make it first of the first, whatever. Gender. So you have to put in a birthday and gender. Um, you can read through all that. Hit next. And if you're getting value out of this video, just hit the like button. Okay, so this is the important bit. So you go into security after you've created your account. Scroll all the way down towards the middle or towards the bottom and see where it says less secure app access you got to turn this on if you don't have that on then your pbx won't be able to send emails using the account so you'll have an alarm saying that that's turned on so now you go to your gmail mailbox and you'll have an email which you'll need to authenticate so once this eventually loads Uh, yeah, okay. All right, so you have a critical security alert. Ah, uh, wrong one, sorry. Critical security alert. Then you gotta scroll down and click on check activity. Okay, and then you've gotta just confirm that you did make that change to enable less secure apps. And once you've done that, you're ready to go onto the phone system and set this account up there. Okay, so if we go back, oh, actually, I'll go back into the mailbox so I can copy the new email account. Okay, so now we're going to head over to the NS system. Assuming you already have the credentials from your dealer, you just log in. While you're waiting for the system to log in, it's a good time to smash that like button. It really helps me out. Who else thinks that NS systems are so slow? Sometimes they're painfully slow. All right, when you're eventually in, bottom left, go to network service, then client feature, and SMTP. Still love the system though, even though it's slow. When you receive an email from the phone system, the from name will determine what you enter up here. So in the name field, I usually put NS700-customer name, so whatever your customer's name is. It also accepts spaces, so you can go back and put customer space name if you wish. And in the next field, mail address, you will just paste the email we copied earlier. And in the next field, you, oh, not that one, that's the IP format. In the name field, that's where you enter the SMTP server name, so smtp.gmail.com. SMTP server port is 587 as the Panasonic's uh, use the TLS encryption so that's what the Gmail service requires don't forget to enable TLS all right so the next step is the account details username is the email address and the password is YouTube123 
Once you've done all that, just cast your eye over all that you've entered, just to confirm it's all correct. It'll just save you time later on going back and forth if something doesn't work. Hey, on this channel we do quick and easy technical video tutorials, so if you're new here, you may want to consider subscribing. Okay, now that you've saved that, we'll go up the top to PBX configuration, then configuration slot. You should have done this uh, before you started, but anyway, um, we'll go to activation key. Just to confirm you've got all the necessary licenses on the system. The voicemail to email license uh, is free um, as long as you've got the latest firmware. I think it's from version 4 or version 6. I can't remember exactly. It was so long ago, but uh, it's free from the then on. So usually brand new systems come with version 8 anyway, so you'll be right. If you have an earlier version of the firmware, you can contact your dealer to get it upgraded. Or if you are a dealer and need assistance upgrading, I will link my video on upgrading the firmware up above. And I'll also put it in the description area as well. For the next area, we'll go back to slot, system property, and then site. In this area, you'll be able to see if your system has an SD card for the UM to work. There are three sizes of SD cards for the NS700s. And once you go into this page, you'll see under storage memory size, you'll see either 2G, 8G, or 16G, depending on what size you have. I'll just leave that on the screen a bit longer, just in case you want to write down the model number, or if you want to smash that like button. I'll also pull up the NS1000 part numbers, as they are different. If your storage memory size says 0G, just like this system does, it means there's no card installed, so the UM side of the system won't work. But you can still set up the SMTP details, and you can use the emailing feature for things like error logs or system updates. I will continue on as if I do have that SD card installed. Obviously the program is exactly the same and I will be able to show you all that. I just won't be able to show you a proper recording. So on the top right hand corner click on the hammer and then on the left click on utility and then click on email notification test email. Once that loads you can enter your email address in there and you can actually send yourself a test email so you know if the SMTP details work straight away. So I'll just put the same email, send it an email to myself, which you can do. In the subject line, I just put test, and that pretty much tells you if it has accepted it. If there is something incorrect, it'll pop up saying there's an issue of some sort. So the next bit, you go up the top to report, and then email report. So once this loads, in here you can see a detailed view of all the emails the system has sent out. So if an email fails, or you've been told it has failed, you can go in here and check individual emails so you can tell if they've been sent or if they've failed. So if they've been sent, it must be something on the customer's end. So they'll have to look into their junk mailbox or something else is blocking it. If it's failed, it could be the customer's emails wrong or your SMTP details are wrong. I'll go over to the mailbox now. As you can see, the email has been sent. If you go into the sent items, this is another good way to tell if the phone system has sent the email because it'll be in the sent folder. It's a good way to prove to your customer that the emails have been sent through. Guys, if you're finding any value in this, just smash that like button, it really helps me out. So now we'll be heading over to the phone system. We'll set up an extension to receive voicemails and send them out as emails. So hit the gear icon on the top right hand corner. And then on the left hand side, we'll go over to UM configuration, mailbox settings and quick settings. Okay, once this loads, yep, so as you know, there's no SD card in there, so the mailbox hasn't been set up, but we'll just go ahead and pretend there is, so we'll add a mailbox for 101, and we'll make the extension 101, and we'll just call it reception for now, and then you scroll down, not too far down because you might miss it. See where it says email slash text message device. So you click on edit. And in here, all you've got to do is set up the, or fill out the email address field. And make sure you enable attach voice file. And the title string can be modified to suit what you want. So day message or um, night message, 
whatever you want. And that shows up in the subject line of the email when they receive it. Yep, and don't forget to click on yes to attach a voice file. Otherwise, you'll just get an email alert with no audio file attached. So the user mode, you can leave it as continuously. Leave that as default. I usually go through every day and um, select delete after send voice file. So if the email is successfully sent, the voicemail message on the phone system will be deleted. So it'll avoid filling up the voicemail box with old messages they probably will never check because they get the email anyway. So once you've done that, you hit OK to save that and then apply to save the whole mailbox. Now reception has a mailbox 101. And you hit OK down the bottom just to save and get out of the page. So now we'll go up the top to PBX configuration. And then we'll go to group and number seven UM group. Then number two unit settings. So by default, the UM pilot number is 500. Then we go into 411 extension settings. And we go to extension 101 and we can forward it to voicemail, which the voicemail pilot is 500. So we'll put in there 500, hit OK. So that's set to no answer, busy no answer. By default, the no answer timer is set to 15 seconds. If you need to change that, you go up the top to extension settings. And then once that loads, you'll go over to the last tab. So click the tab to the right and the last tab is forward DND. Then scroll to the right again. And you can see the second last column is the timer column. It's set to 15 seconds by default. And with the drop down, you can select whatever time you want. We'll hit OK to get out of that. Then we'll go up the top and hit the floppy disk to save the running config. Good idea to hit the floppy disk to save the running config in case there is a power outage. Um, highly unlikely, but um, at least you won't lose all your data if the phone goes off. It does take a bit of time to do the save. Should be done anytime soon. Done. And then you go up the top again, hit log out. Always remember to log out guys, don't leave the system logged in. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the video. If you found this valuable, please consider liking and sharing this video, it really helps me out. If you need any assistance, um, I'm always happy to help everyone out, so just reach out. Thank you for watching again, take care.